In this lesson, we're going to learn about a, a special technique in C++ called RAII. It's kind of it's it's an acronym for Resource Acquisition Is Initialization. It's a kind of weird acronym. Uh, and what what even does that mean? Resource acquisition is initialization. Uh, so let me explain. So we've just introduced this concept of of you know using the free store. And we pointed out a very specific problem uh, that arises when using the free store is that now you have to manage the memory resource that you're using on the free store, right? So there's actually several types of resources in, in computers, not just memory. For example, uh, a file. Okay, a file is a resource. If, if one program is opened a file and is working with it, generally you don't want another program to also open and start working on that file, right? So a file on your hard drive as a resource. Uh, your program requests that resource from the operating system, and then when you're done with it, you give that resource back to the operating system. Another example of resource is a network connection. So the network card on your computer has several ports, and, and so it manages the connections that you have to the internet. Um, so when you set up a network connection, that's a resource that you currently own and are using. And when you're done using that resource, you need to give it back to the operating system. The operating system is really just a big resource manager. This technique called RAII is designed for any kind of resource management. It doesn't only apply to memory management. The idea behind this technique is that C++, as we've learned, has very specific lifetime uh, guarantees. When an object on the runtime stack is first declared, uh, its constructor is called. And every time it goes out of scope, its destructor is called. So we know when an object begins and ends its life uh, if that object is on the runtime stack. Now the whole problem is that now we're trying to use this uh, memory on the free store uh, and we don't get those guarantees anymore. But the idea about res the idea behind resource acquisition is initialization is that well, you can actually write a class, that is bound to some function scope that does have a, a constructor and a destructor, right? It does have a well-known lifetime and use that object to manage uh, the resource. You can, you can create a, a, a resource manager object. That object, when it's, con when it's constructed, it will allocate the resource that you're trying to use Again, it could be a network resource, it could be a file handle, or it could be memory on the free store. Um, and that manager object will be a value object on the runtime stack. And it's you know, generally a very small object that's easy to pass around between different functions and, and, and whatnot. Um, but we, we regain the ability to control the lifetime because this object is on the runtime stack. And then we use, we take advantage of the fact that we know when this object will come, come to life, when, when it will be constructed and when it will be destructed. Uh, and we use that to allocate and deallocate the resource. So uh, when we say resource acquisition is initialization, what we're saying is acquire a resource when you initialize an object and then uh, release the resource when you destruct an object. Okay, so in order to demonstrate, I've created this resource manager class. Um, it's called image manager. Remember we have this image object, so now we're gonna create an image manager to manage that Im image object. Uh, again, an image manager. Um, it has a constructor and it has a destructor. And the only thing it, it, the only data member it has is a pointer to an image, okay? A raw pointer to an image, as you can see. Uh, and the implementation is just extremely simple. Um, when we construct the object, we create a new image on the free store, okay? And we're setting our private data member, which is a pointer to an image, okay? We're setting that private data member to the pointer returned from the call to new image. Um, so when this object has been constructed, it will contain a pointer to an object on the heap. And when this object is destructed, we will delete our pointer. Okay, 
So this image manager object is very small. It's, it just basically is a wrapper for a raw pointer, but it's not a raw pointer. It's a wrapper around a raw pointer that has a lifetime. It has a specific moment when it is constructed and a specific moment when it is destructed. And if we use this object as a value type as part of, of some stack frame, like we're doing here, we're creating an image manager, okay, uh, inside of the, the scope of the main function. And then we're again, we're gonna call the set random pixel on the image. So there is a, actually a getter function which returns the uh, dereferenced pointer. Here's the implementation right here. We just returned the dereferenced pointer. Okay, um, so we're still gonna call this set random pixel function, but I want you to notice when we run this program, let's build it and run it. Okay, so when we build this and run this program, notice that the image was created and also destroyed. And we didn't have to write new or delete inside of the main function to manage that image resource. We got that management, we got that memory management back automatically as part of the image manager class, which calls new in the constructor and calls delete in the destructor. Okay, so by taking advantage of the well-known object lifetime semantics that C++ guarantees us for objects on the runtime stack, we can actually uh, write special manager type classes that are able to manage memory resources for us.